Cat Williams has a new special yes. on Netflix. Did you watch it? I saw stuff people were sending me that, that he used one of my lines. Who, who raised who you? Who raised you? Who raised right. you? He did use that. He yes. did, I was going. I was going to mention that because it sounded very TK-ish when yes, he said it. Yes, yes, yes. You know, not to say you invented that term, but you popularized that right, term right. in the kind and, of and, comedy and, world. And to the people who was questioning me about Cat Williams, Cat Williams is really one of the greatest comedians of our time. Agreed. And what I tell people, I don't own the phrase who raised you if you say it on TV, if you say it in the comedy show, because I don't think he did it in purposely to bite on me. I just think that situation that he was in, he just used it. Now, if Cat Williams sold a T-shirt, a baseball cap, a hoodie, then I could sue him because I own the rights to sell merchandise on who raised you. Right. And to be fair, I watched the whole special. It's not like he used that term exactly. repetitively yep. throughout the show. There right. was one situation and he said, who raised you? Right. And it made sense for in the context of, of what he said and so yes. forth. And that's all it was. That's all it was. That's all it was. That's all it was. All it was. Um, I, I watched it and, and I'm a big Cat Williams fan and I was somewhat disappointed overall. It had its moments. It had its moments. Right. But a lot of people really... The, the feedback that I saw online was that it almost seemed like he was worried about getting canceled and tried to avoid certain topics that eventually that, you know, might be a blowback on him. Like, let's see what Dave Chappelle went through and, and so forth. Um, it seemed somewhat safe. There was a lot of it was about sex and about him fucking, which someone just was like, ah, eh, it kind of lost me. It was right, like, you know, right, right. I don't need to hear 30 minutes about Cat not 30 Williams minutes. Fucking. You got to know how minutes. to do it. You got yeah. It's like you seen my show. Yeah. yeah my show exactly. is almost 2 hours. Right. But I know this for a fact. I only talk about sex 10 to 15 minutes out of 2 hours. Now watch what I'm about there to tell you, you. But back in the day people will say, "Oh, you talk about sex a lot." And you know how I get them? I said, "You listen to reply, you didn't listen to comprehend." I said, my show is almost two hours. All, what you remembered was the sex. I talk about all types of topics. But to, to um, talk about, defend Cat and, his, and to come to Cat in his defense, when you've been doing this comedy thing so long, you really find out how deep your catalog, catalog is. What I mean is, see, anybody can be good the first five years of their, their act, but can you be strong for almost 40 years? And not to take anything away from Cat, but see, I never had a high or a low. I've been, what all the comics say, consistent across the board. Cat is a great comedian. I, w I wish him the best. I learned in this game that even if I had an opinion, I can't give an opinion based on the world that we live in. Um, I just want everybody to get better at their craft. And that's, that's my thing for that. I, I don't watch other comics on purpose, even if I have a comedian open for me. And it's a rule that I've shared with comedians. You shouldn't watch another comic because even if they say something that's hilarious, that has nothing to do with your stand-up, the subconscious mind, if it's funny, one day you can be in another city, another situation, and have the same thing that happened to Cat, where he says, who raised you, based on it's possible he saw something that I did on a special, and... He had that moment uh, where he lapsed and his guard went down and bam, it was out there. I'm not saying that's how it actually happened. I'm saying that's an example of how it could happen. Well, what do you think of T.I. doing stand-up now? I think T.I. gives a great example of in this country, you can be who the fuck you want to be and go after it. Like I hear so much feedback Um but he's really brought a lot of attention to the comedy world. Mm, and even yeah. though he, yeah. And even though he hasn't um, put the years in 
We live in a world of there is no set blueprint to success. Whatever we learned in this game of entertainment for the last 30 years, throw it out the window because there are there is no rules no more. Whoever think the Kardashians would be as successful and rich as they are, right? Whoever think, no disrespect, who think Nick Cannon would be fucking as rich and using up all the baby formula milk in the country that women are literally fucking this guy knowing that he got a baby a week ago. Like, he ain't having children over a 20, 30-year span. He's having a baby every other month. And not to knock you, Nick, if you can pull a bitch and she understand, nigga, with the Michael Jackson shoes you be wearing on them shows, then do your thing. But what T.I., and, and instead of people getting emotional about it, it shows you in this country, if you put your mind to it, you can go after whatever your dream is. And that's what T.I. stands to me. And I want people to look at it that way. He made his mind up to do stand-up comedy. He's going to try his best at it. Now, is he getting opportunities that a lot of people who have worked hard for can't get? But, hey, life is not motherfucking fair. Like, we got to stop being emotional about this shit. Yeah, it can hurt a little bit. Yeah, you might want this. But listen, Vlad, you've been here. Life's mm -hmm. not fucking fair, period. And when people look, go through life understanding that, you'll be more in control of your feelings and your emotions. And I'm not saying that your life will be better, but you can understand a little bit more. Or just say, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs>